it's worth taking a second to comment on how the for loop in Scala actually works. Turns out the for loop in Scala isn't really a loop in the sense of what you have in uh, most other programming languages. Instead, they are for comprehensions. In reality, the for loop just transforms to other things. When we did for i in 1 to 10, print line i, when we first started this off, Scala actually converts this code from that to 1 to 10 dot for each i rocket print line i. They do the same thing. Uh, in fact, they do the same thing in large part because this actually gets turned into that. Not everything goes into a for each. When we use a yield, so if we have the yield of i times i to produce the values squared, that winds up being converted to a call to map. 1 to 10 dot map i rocket i times i. We get the same output from it because this is what this winds up doing. In fact, you can use a for loop on anything that has a for each, a map, a filter. Remember those if guards? The if guards are implemented as filters when you work on on these things. And it also needs a flat map. And the flat map comes into the play when we have multiple generators. So if you use a regular map instead of a flat map, you'll get multi-dimensional collections. The flat map flattens it all out and gives you a single collection. Now the real beauty of this is that your for loop can work over pretty much any type of collection and it will do so in a way that is very efficient. Not only that, but you as a programmer can write your own types and as long as they have the required methods, you can use them in for loops and get the same syntactic benefits that people kind of want to have from their for loops with the collections that you make up. It's not only collections that work with for loops. As I said, it works with anything that has a for each, a map, a filter, flat map. For that reason, there are some other types. It turns out you can use a for loop on option. Uh, later on, we'll see things like futures, and you can use for loops on, on futures. So actually being a for comprehension and converting to calls to other methods makes the Scala for loop very, very flexible and gives it a lot of power.